Joe Maurer is a player that seems today to have built a legacy dominated by the phrase of, what if? What if he'd gone to college and played both baseball and football? What if he hadn't gotten so many concussions behind the dish? What if he had never caught in the big leagues, instead taking the path of Bryce Harper and Josh Donaldson, guys who switched positions near the start of their careers? Could he have been the next Tony Gwynn, with 3,000 plus hits to his name? Or would he even have been half the superstar he was in his prime? What if, what if, what if? The fact is, Joe Maurer was a catcher, and for years, he gave fans one of the rarest spectacles in the sport, a backstop who's also the best pure hitter in the game, winning three batting titles in a four-year stretch, taking home MVP in a season where he batted nearly 370, and putting up gold glove defense behind the dish year in and year out, while routinely posting OPS pluses over 140. We may never see the likes of him again, and because of that, it's important to revisit the peak of Joe Maurer's career, when he was a baseball unicorn, doing things that no catcher in the history of baseball had ever done before. Hall of Fame worthy things, counting stats be damned. Joe Maurer grew up in St. Paul, Minnesota, seven miles from the old Metrodome, where the Twins won two World Series with outfield balls that looked to consist of big billowing trash bags. Maurer's grandfather, father, and two older brothers played professional baseball. It was in the bloodline that Maurer would play too, and become a star. But, born in 1983, Maurer came of age before the boom in private coaches and elite travel teams. By the time he was picked first in 2010, Bryce Harper was playing in over 100 baseball games per year, in states all over the country. In a St. Paul basement instead, Joe Maurer was hitting off of something his father had invented, the quick swing, a contraption consisting of pipes that dropped a wiffle ball straight down, forcing the Maurer boys to be very short and quick to the ball. But Joe would only do that in his spare time, because he played football and basketball too. Above all, Joe Maurer was raised to be a normal human being. He played three sports because his friends played the same sports. He did well in school because he was raised to try his hardest at everything. He attended Creighton Durham School, which boasted alumni like Paul Molitor, Steve Walsh, and Chris Wenke. Maurer played varsity baseball all four years at the school, and each year he hit over 500. He struck out only once during those four years. In the state tournament, his junior season. When he came back to the dugout, his teammates wanted to know if anything was wrong. The pitcher who struck him out, Paul Feener, still gets interviewed about it, though to his credit, he refuses to gloat. The Twins even brought Feener to Maurer's induction into the Twins Hall of Fame. During his senior year, Maurer homered in seven straight games and hit over 600. He was named the Gatorade Player of the Year. What's more, between 1998 and 2000, he was the starting catcher on Team USA's 18 and under team. When he got back from playing with Team USA, it was just in time to start two a days for high school football. He didn't pick up the pigskin much before this time of year, seeing the sport as more like a hobby than one where he was the number one recruit in the country. During his junior season, he led the Raiders to a perfect campaign and the school's first state football championship. In total, he threw for over 5,000 yards and 73 touchdowns, all while standing tall at 6 foot 4 and 205 pounds. A pure pocket passer with a cannon for an arm and a calm demeanor that made him nearly a coach on the field. In February 2001, on National Signing Day, Maurer committed to Florida State University so he could play for a legend, Bobby Bowden. Oh, and February was also when Maurer was the starting point guard on the basketball team, where as a senior, he averaged 20 points per game. Had he wanted to, he could have played at a D1 school. And it's not like Maurer was playing against weak competition either. When Maurer even practiced before hoop season began is unclear, but maybe he didn't need to. His high school friends couldn't believe how naturally gifted he was at everything he picked up. But, according to more than a few sources, Maurer was also that kid who, when he saw someone eating alone, would invite them to sit at his table for lunch. He never acted like he was a superstar. He studied for his final exams even after being the first pick in the 2001 MLB draft. But his friends insisted he was serious about turning down baseball to attend FSU, where he could play both sports like Deion Sanders once did, and later Jamie's Winston. Maybe the twins took notice, because the more Maurer successfully threw patterns to his old high school pals, the higher his signing bonus became, eventually reaching $5.15 No one turns down that kind of money, especially in the early 2000s, and Maurer couldn't pass up the chance to play for his hometown team as well. There were some in the baseball world that were shocked by the twins' decision, because the obvious pick for the top slot was pitcher Mark Pryor of USC, who some scouts were calling the greatest pitcher in the history of college baseball at the time. And what's up with drafting a catcher with the first pick? It hadn't happened since the 1970s, when Danny Goodwin was picked first in 1971 by the White Sox, and then again in 1975 by the Angels. His career war? Negative 1.7. From a probability perspective, the Twins were taking a big risk. High school catchers taken in the first round face an uphill climb. The Twins were a bad team and needed pitching, not a project that might take years to develop. But Maurer didn't need years. 
After signing in 2001, he was off for 32 games to the Appalachian League, where he hit 400 and 110 ABs. Then he spent 2002 in the Midwest League, where he hit 302 with just 42 Ks and 411 ABs. By 2003, the Twins were promoting him to Double A, where he kept hitting with a 341 average and 30 doubles. He was also throwing out 52% of attempted base dealers, an insane total for a kid who would still be in college in most circumstances. Scouts had him right behind the powerful Mark Teixeira as a hitting prospect, though some baseball execs probably thought Maurer would end up getting some seasoning at AAA before the Twins called him up. However, Maurer never did end up playing even a single inning of AAA. Joe's first game in the bigs was also the first game of the 2004 season, because at age 20, he was named the Twins starting backstop. So sure were the Twins and Joe's abilities that in the offseason they traded away all-star AJ Pruszynski to make room for Maurer. Being a starting catcher at 20 is very rare, and carries with it some heavy expectations. Pudge Rodriguez was 19 when the Rangers put him behind the plate, and Johnny Bench was 20 when he joined the Big Red Machine. But Maurer seemed wise beyond his years, and composed. Outfielder Torrey Hunter thought he was more like 40 than 20. One game in baseball from a statistical standpoint means very little. But in Maurer's case, his debut seemed like an omen. Facing Cleveland, Maurer went 2 for 3, and then the next night, he got a hit in his first AB, meaning he was 3 for 4 as a start to his career. But unfortunately, Maurer hurt his knee in that second game and would only go on to play in just 35 contests all year long, though he did hit 306 along the way. Should the Twins have moved him from behind the plate at this juncture? The aforementioned Bryce Harper and Josh Donaldson, as well as Craig Biggio and Carlos Delgado are just a few of the amazing players who've had immense success after their respective transitions. After all, Maurer's bat was one of the best in the game, and having him out of the lineup was bad news for Minnesota. But no such change was coming for Joe. He was a catcher, and a great one defensively, which is not something a team is likely to throw away if they can help it. And during the next few years of what would follow, it really did seem like they had made the right decision. While 2005 was a down year for the Twins, barely of legal drinking age Maurer hit 294 with 26 doubles, 9 bombs, and a 107 OPS+. Plus. Ever since he'd signed, scouts have been waiting for Maurer to become the reincarnation of Johnny Bench, an elite game caller who could also pop 40 dingers a year, a crazy projection that would be almost impossible to live up to. But even more so for the young Maurer, who was a different kind of hitter than that entirely, despite being 6'4". Yes, he hit the ball very hard. Advanced stats for batting didn't arrive until Maurer was 32, but even then, his hard hit percentage was well above league average at 45.9%. Most of those were rockets just over infielders' heads or past their outstretched gloves on the ground. The quick swing contraption his father had made turned Maurer into a line drive machine, and it was using this approach that he managed to, at the still insanely young age of 22, post the highest batting average in Major League Baseball at 347 the next year. It was the first time an American League catcher had won the crown, but it wouldn't be Maurer hours last. The Twins set an MLB record that season by not sneaking into first place until the 159th game of the year. When the Tigers got swept by a bad Royals team, the Twins captured the AL Central and then got swept by the A's in the ALDS, with Maurer hitting 182 with no homers or RBIs. The Twins had a Cy Young winner in Johan Santana, an MVP in Justin Morneau, and a batting title winner in Maurer, and yet they were bounced without winning a game. The 07 season would end up being a major disappointment for both the Twins and Maurer. The team finished under 500, and Maurer hit below 300, while appearing in just 109 games as he dealt with a litany of leg issues. His OPS Plus dropped from 144 to 118, and he didn't make the All-Star team or tally any rogue MVP votes. He did manage to throw out 53% of attempted base dealers, a mark that led the American League. Maurer's national stardom was still ascending, however. He even appeared in a Pepsi ad with Johnny Damon, showing how his calm demeanor and savage swing was winning him fans the league over. The Pepsi ad was another kind of omen, again, of good things to come. Because between 2008 and 2010, Joe Maurer did things that very few MLE catchers have ever done. These are the seasons that cement Maurer's case for the Hall of Fame, despite catching fewer than 900 games for his career. In 08, he won his second batting title with a 328 average to go along with 31 doubles, a 134 OPS plus, and earning his first career gold glove. That season, he threw out 36% of base dealers, made only three errors, and allowed just four pass balls in 139 games behind the plate. He was one of the best pitch framers in the game as well, saving the Twins 68 runs between 2004 and 2011 on borderline strikes called. 
Then came 2009, when Maurer led the league in hitting for the third time. But that doesn't tell the whole story. For the first half of the season, Joe was chasing history, a 400 average, something only Ted Williams has done since 1941. But it's more than that. After his first 200 plate appearances, Maurer was batting 412. Only 10 other players had reached 410 at that threshold since 1941. It goes without saying that none of them played catcher, where Maurer was taking a beating day in and day out. Catching injuries not concussion related would end up costing Maurer 500 games while he was a primary backstop. Few catchers his size ever last in MLB, principally because of the stress placed on the lower half. For that one magical season though, it didn't matter one bit. Maurer kept hitting, reaching career highs with 28 homers, 191 hits, and 96 RBIs. He also finished with a 365 average, the best ever by a catcher in MLB history. He led the majors in offensive war with 7.7, .7, OBP at 444, slugging at 587, OPS at 1031, and OPS Plus at 171. He won his sole MVP trophy for those incredible numbers. The greatest season ever by a catcher? Some would say Mike Piazza in 1997, or Johnny Bench in the 1970s. Buster Posey won a batting title and MVP in 2012 and a World Series ring to boot. Pudge in 1999 clubbed 35 homers and hit 335 while setting the gold standard for defense. But Joe was flirting with the sacred, a 400 average. His home run percentage was also about twice as good as the MLB average while he was doing it, and he struck out half as much as the average MLB player too. Instead of grounders, in 09, Maurer got the ball in the air at a career best 28.8%. Oh yeah, did we also mention that he won his second consecutive Gold Glove Award too? Sadly, the Twins got swept in the ALDS, getting 5 hits and 12 trips, but it wouldn't end up mattering. On that depressing subject, Maurer's Twins would never win even a single playoff game during his tenure, despite making 4 separate appearances. Maurer followed up 2009 with another superb season in 2010, with an OPS Plus of 140 and a 327 average. He roped a career high 43 doubles, but saw his home run rate drop by over 3 times, from 4.6% to just 1.5%. Some Twins fans complained about Maurer's lack of power relative to that magical 09 campaign, but largely the Minnesota faithful applauded yet another all-star gold glove silver slugger season for the hometown hero. Between 2011 and 2013, Maurer caught 201 games for the Twins, who, instead of making the playoffs like years past, were finishing well below 500. 2011 in particular was a tough one for Maurer, because he was placed in the 60-day DL with bilateral leg weakness, a name that called into question Maurer's toughness, at least in the eyes of a select few of the Minnesota faithful. Didn't he want to play? Did Twins fans, his people, his neighbors really think that one of the greatest athletes ever to live didn't want to play the sport he loved? The reality is, he had signed a $184 million contract, and he wasn't on the field earning his keep. What was leg weakness anyway? Weakness is for sissies, message boards in the Twin Cities screamed. Turns out, Maurer's injury was caused by a rare viral condition that was much more serious than a sore leg. Maurer proved how much it had affected him when he came back with strong seasons in 2012 and 2013, making the all-star team and hitting over 300 both year, but he was still toiling away on really bad teams. He had over 30 doubles each season and was still an exceptional catcher, with an incredible body of work both behind and seemingly at the time in front of him. Tellingly, in 2011, the Twins played Maurer at first 18 times, and once in right field. The handwriting seemed to be on the wall. Catching was taking its toll on Maurer's body, and everyone knew it. Sadly, the Twins didn't move him soon enough, as in August 2013, Maurer took a foul ball off his face mask and suffered a severe concussion, which hadn't been his first behind the plate. He missed the rest of that year, and in the offseason, the Twins traded another concussion victim away, Justin Morneau, to the Pirates, opening up first base in a full-time capacity for Maurer in 2014. Concussion issues blurred Maurer's vision for basically the rest of his career. He struggled with lighting, trying various techniques along the way to aid his waning eyes, like hitting with sunglasses or even being rested during day games. The headaches came and went, without a lot he could affect seemingly. There were even things like workouts he couldn't finish because of acute dizziness. This went on year after year. The production fell, as could be expected, though not as far as one might think given the circumstances. From 2014 through his retirement after 2018, he posted at least a league average OPS Plus 4 out of 5 years, a stunning accomplishment giving the weight of his baseball disability. But though he was still serviceable during this time, that's not the Joe Maurer that should be remembered. When Joe was at his peak as a catcher, his OPS of 827 was better than Bench, Fisk, Rodriguez, and Yogi Berra. During Maurer's 8 year prime, his war of 41.4 was 5th best in the majors, and his batting average of 327 was 2nd best. 
He won three gold gloves, five silver slugger awards, and one MVP. Beyond just those raw numbers, Joe Maurer did things like break up no hitters in the ninth inning at an astonishing rate, somehow tallying three separate hits of this type in his career. By 2018, after 15 big league seasons, he was done, and in his final AB, he did what he had done 427 times before. He laced a double, of course to the opposite field, with that classic inside out hack that had made him famous the baseball world over. It was a storybook ending for a guy who got to live his dream, playing for his hometown city, winning batting title after batting title, and for a time, posting numbers that were among the best the game has ever seen at his respective position. Hall of Fame numbers? I guess we'll have to see. But either way, we really felt at MTC that this period in his career deserved a tribute, which we hopefully have done justice in providing. Now, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and click this playlist for other essay content just like this. Have a great rest of your day.